Hey everyone, it's Snack from Crow's Nest, and today I've got a pretty short video. Um, I compiled all the data from every top eight there was ever in any online tournament of reasonable size. And so today we're looking at the data from those top eight deck lists. But before we get to that, uh, I have an announcement. We will be having the first ever IRL Deck Devastators Tournament, and it's going to be 3v3, all Edison. So I'm going to give you some quick details here. Um, here's the address, uh, 1700 Oviedo Mall Boulevard, Oviedo, Florida. It's on October 26th. There was a different 3v3 on October 26th. If you paid for that one, it will transfer over. Um, but now it's officially Deck Devastators run independently. And 10 a.m. registration, 11 a.m. start. $2,000 cash prize pool, assuming that we get at least 20 different teams of three people. And if there's more teams than that, the prizing will scale. So lots to play for. Uh, the entry is $120 per team. Like I said, all three are Edison format. There's no Tangu, no Goat, just Edison all the way. Um, we're doing Swiss for the bracket and then cutting to a top four, top four teams, so 12 people. And uh, here's how you would need to pay for that, but uh, I'll be linking the document here, which has all the information you could ever want about this um, event. And if you also, you can go to the edisonformat.net and click on Deck Devastator 3v3 right here. It'll also take you to the same document if you need info on it. So everyone be sure to show up in Orlando, Oviedo technically, uh, October 26th. Uh, it'll be huge. You'll be able to see all your favorite people there. I'll be calling. I'll be um, uh, casting it, I guess, is what you would say. So just like any other Deck Devastators, should go pretty well. So anyways, back to the graphs that we have. Um, this is basically every top eight ever broken down by deck. So we have, of the 38 tournaments, we had 70 Blackwing decks make top eight, and that was about 25% of all the decks that ever made top eight at any event ever. And then 44 value for 15%, 41 frog, 30 zombie, which is actually really surprising to me that zombies were so represented. Um, and when I looked through it, it was actually a lot of the same people. So you had your Jake XO, also known as best video player NA, um, Fitz, Pizza, Silchis, um, beast mode. There are a couple others that I might be forgetting right now, but yeah, it was a lot of the same people. Whereas some other decks, it was just like so many people, but zombies, we had like five or six people really carrying this deck. 27 hero beat. Then a pretty big drop off to dragon turbo. Again, not that many different people. We had OG ghost rider, of course, uh, hydro pump, you know, uh, 14 glad or sorry 14 diva hero that makes more sense <laughs> and then uh nine glad beast nine machina seven quick drop plant yeah uh six dragon very few amaryllis i think it was two and then 12 decks that didn't fit into any of these other categories so i think there's like a neospatian in there there's a rescue cat um and whatnot so yeah that's a pretty interesting graph and Something that I wanted to do is not just look at, you know, throw them all together and pretend that pretend that they're all the same tournament, because the format has really changed since um, RBET won, which was in early 2022, I want to say. And so I have that here. Um, instead of doing every single deck category, I just did the three big ones and then everything else. So Frogs, Blackwing, and Vayu. Uh, Blackwing here in yellow, Vayu in red, and Frogs in blue. Everything else is in green. And this is an interesting chart. I did it by percentage of the top eight that they made up. So each one of these horizontal lines represents a different, another deck that made it into top eight. So this would be one deck, two decks, three decks, four decks, five decks, six decks, seven decks, eight decks, as you can imagine. So just to make sure everybody understands how to read this graph, let's take this last one right here. We had two Blackwing, because it goes up two bars on yellow, one Vayu, two Frog, and three other decks. <clears throat> so 
What I really think is important to measure here is the green. How much area does the green take up, which is everything that isn't the big three. And I think it's not super drastic, but I do think the green, uh, the green area shrinks as time goes on. So at the beginning you had like the first tournament was there was one of the big three and seven, everything else. And then you had here, there are, uh, five other decks here. There's six other decks. And then by the end here, you're looking at like the last three tournaments, there are only three other decks. And I have these numbers here at the top. They might be hard to read on the screen, but you see three, 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 four, four, three, five. So usually not too many other decks, like just, just under half of them are not contained within the big three that you would expect. <clears throat> but we didn't just look at the decks themselves. We also looked at individual cards because I did have every single deck list in here uh, from the top eight. So this is these are the YDK files <laughs> and uh, each one of these ID numbers represents a card. So I put all this into the spreadsheet and basically I was able to track just like I did with the decks over time, I was able to track the cards over time. And this looks like a big mess, but if you just focus on one color, uh, you can really uh, see if see that there have been some cards that had some significant change over time. So let's start with this blue one. If you look at the blue line, let's see here. I don't know if that helps you see it or not, but the blue starts up here. There's like a good amount of blue and it kind of falls off a cliff and now there's barely any blue that you're seeing. And that card is Light Imprisoning Mirror. At the beginning of the format, I think people were way, way, way more concerned with light sworn decks, with fairy decks, and all that kind of stuff. And they were all side decking Light Imprisoning Mirror to play around that stuff. And I think as we've seen the format progress, um, first of all, people are just not as scared of that deck anymore. And they, they need those side deck spots to go toward Blackwing, Vayu, Frog. But also people have found different answers for light decks than Light and Presume Mirror. I think most decks would rather run Deck Devastation Virus or something like that instead of Light and Presume Mirror. And I know that for Blackwing decks, in addition to Deck Dev, something that they might like is Skill Drain because it actually stops Consecrated Light, whereas Light and Presume Mirror cannot stop that. So just that's a really interesting one to see that Light and Presume Mirror really fell off a cliff. Um, DD Crow in purple here, just had a sort of a slight decline, <clears throat> but considering it's it, the amount that it was seen at before, it used to be like two or three copies in every single side deck. And now it's definitely not the case as much anymore. And so now we're down looking at around, let's see, around 10, nine or 10 copies per top eight. Uh, and then here is in red, we have Phoenix Wing Windblast, another one where it starts off strong with the Light Imprisoning Mirror. And then kind of quickly people were like, okay, these decks that can run Wing, wing Blasts aren't the best decks in the format. So I think that's what really contributed to that uh, card fa falling off. And so every once in a while, if you have DD Hero or Amaryllis or something like that, get multiple spots in top eight, then you have, have these little spikes where Wing Blast does better. But Overall, that card has definitely seen less play in top eights, probably just because those decks aren't as popular. Uh, one card that's gone up in green here is Legacy of Yadagarasu. As you can see at the beginning, literally no one played Legacy of Yadagarasu. I think here the first one might be Pro Storm. <clears throat> this is, yes, this is Ribbit Rulers 1, where Pro Storm played two of the card. And then I think at one of the deck devs, or Peak of the Beak maybe, I remember Yomero actually played jar of greed in uh yeah here at deck dev two maybe or deck dev one i know you may have played jar of greed in glads and i think maybe you know since then everybody realized that yada is just strictly better but then there's the mind games now where people are playing jar instead of yada and whatnot but regardless legacy of yada has really shot up to where now you can expect to see like <clears throat> four or five copies maybe in a top eight whereas before obviously it was zero um, here's a card in yellow, Cyber Dragon, that like DD Crow, you can see up here, Cyber Dragon and DD Crow were just in every single deck list, basically, in multiple copies. And then somewhere around here, Cyber Dragon fell off a cliff and people just said, we don't have to respect machines. We're going to start taking it out of our deck. I think another thing that influenced that is that Vayu decks 
started wanting to have more space in the extra deck where they want to be able to run three armed wing and like army arm or red dragon arch fiend or something like that so because of the space in the extra they would rather cut the fortress dragon and just say we don't need cyber dragons either and so that's a big contribution big contributing factor to why cyber dragon has fallen off but it's kind of growing again which is funny it's like people said oh we don't need this card oh maybe we do a little bit though maybe not as much as before but we might need the card a little bit and then yeah i think that's every single card on this chart so these those are just the five cards that showed the most movement from the first five tournaments of history to the most recent five and something else I looked at is individual cards, like just put them in a different scale so that you can think about them differently. So this this is uh, the cards that have gone up in the most amount of copies, once again, from the first five tournaments to the most recent five. So Legacy of Yadagarasu, we are seeing four more copies than we were at the start of the format on average, in top eight, that is. And then we have deck devastation virus we're seeing 3.2 more copies than we were at the beginning um and so after deck dev deck dev obviously i think um a big reason for that is just that value and blackwing are more common to see whereas like as we saw at the beginning this first tournament there was only one value deck and zero blackwing so and it was like it really took a couple tournaments for those decks to really pop off in the red and yellow here anyways so Deck Devastation Virus is at 3.2 more copies than before. And then you see a lot of just Blackwing cards <laughs> uh, where just the deck Blackwings are more popular. So you see them a lot more. You see more copies of Bora, more copies of Sirocco, Blizzard. Mask of Restrict is an interesting one because I think that one, it sort of, it, you could argue that it speaks to Dream Frogs because Mask of Restrict is arguably better than Rug against Dream Frogs since they're summoning Light and Darkness Dragon instead of Monarchs as often. But I think the main reason for Mask of Restrict, and this is kind of weird, you might not expect it, but it's actually kind of a Dragon Turbo card. Where Dragon Turbo don't want to play Rug, but they will play Mask of Restrict. Or it might also be the case for like a Light Sworn deck, they might also play Mask of Restrict, but I haven't seen that as much. But I do know that. Dragon Turbo lists are often playing Mask of Restrict. And then here's Consecrated Light, 2.6 more copies than before. I know at the beginning of the, um, at the beginning of Edison, basically online, a lot of people were discounting Consecrated Light because it did get blown up by Deck Devastation Virus and stuff. Um, and I also know that Light Sworn players did, weren't huge fans of it because unlike, like, Fairy players could crash and get Consecrated from the deck, whereas Light Sworn players had to draw it, but... We're seeing now that Lightstorm players are just main deck or they're side decking three copies of it and like they're probably going to find it. Also, the popularity of uh, Christia Lightsworn with being able to pitch Consecrated with Herald or add it back off Christia really helps the popularity of Consecrated Light. And the fact that Vayu and Blackwing are more popular means that it's just better to, it's worth more as a side deck slot because it's going to hit more decks in your path during the tournament. And then some more Blackwing cards, Shura, Icarus, and Kalut. <clears throat> so here's the opposite of that. The decks, the cards that have seen the biggest decrease in play in the top eight. And the number one, as we saw before, was Light and Prisoning Mirror. 6.6 fewer copies in the last five tournaments than there were in the first five. And Wing Blast, we had uh, 4.6 fewer. Cyber Dragon, 4.6 fewer. DD Crow, 3.8 fewer. Fortress Dragon, 3 fewer. Book of Moon, also kind of a loser here. Uh, people have started cutting that card a lot more, especially in like Vayu. It used to be kind of a staple in Vayu and now not as much. Um, Dark Graffer is an interesting one to see, but that might just be like, we had, I think the first tournament had like Norlaris or something or like, actually the first tournament I'm pretty sure had Footman with three Graffer and Pizza with Norlaris on three Graffer. So I think that might just be noise. Um... Foolish Burial makes sense to see fewer of because plant decks were way more popular at the beginning than toward the end. Uh, Diva, once again, Diva decks, that was another one that we saw where um, at the beginning we had Wing Blast really popular because of like Diva hero decks, and those definitely are not as popular these days. Uh, and Sangin. Sangin is another card that was in 
like zombie and Vayu, and now those lists aren't Vayu almost never plays Sangin, and zombie often will cut Sangin from the list. So that's pretty much all the statistics I have for today. Um, kind of a quick video. Once again, I'd encourage you to sign up for the IRL Deck Devastators. It's going to be 3v3. You can see me there. I will be commentating. Uh, should be lots of fun. And I guess with that, I'll say adios.